Greetings, I'm Pastor Delphine, and this is the Fragrance of Prayer. Today, I want to share with you from a passage that probably is familiar to me to you in the book of Matthew. It's found in the seventh chapter. If you want to just take a moment and open up your Bibles to Matthew 7, we're going to start at verse 7. And this passage um, in the Bible, they the heading where it kind of gives you the subject list that this is prayer and the golden rule. And so today we're going to be talking about Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8. And then we'll uh, just have a little bit further explanation with uh, through passages, uh, verses 9 through 12. So again, we're reading from Matthew 7 and 7, and it reads, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. And verse eight reads, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Today, we're going to talk about asking in prayer. And I wanted to read this passage to you because the um, acronym for it is ASK. Ask, A, seek, S, and K, knock. Ask, seek, knock. And so let's look at that for today. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. So when we come to God in prayer, based on this passage of scripture, we can expect that he is going to answer us. When we are seeking God for something, we can expect that what we are seeking will be found. When we are knocking, we can expect that what we're knocking for, that door, that place where we're knocking will be open to us. As we pray to God, we come before him to ask him for something. May I ask you today, what are you asking God for? Do you remember the last time you asked him for something? Did you thank him when you received it? Or are you still waiting to receive it? In this passage, there is an assurance that if we ask, we will receive. If we seek, it will be found, and if we knock, it will be open. I want to encourage you that prayer is not just about the relationship, and we talk about this a lot. We talk about the intimacy that we build in prayer, the relationship that is formed between us and God when we come to him in prayer, how as we grow in our prayer lives, we get stronger and we're able to come to the Father and intercede on behalf of other people. None of that would mean anything without the assurance that when we come to the Father, when we seek him, when we're knocking, when we desperately need him to answer, that he is willing to answer, that he is able to answer, that he desires to answer, and that he will answer us. That can be hard because sometimes we think if the answer doesn't come in a few seconds, maybe an hour, maybe a day, maybe a month or a year, that that means that God doesn't want to answer us and will not answer us. That's not necessarily true. And I want us to talk about this. So if you have been asking and seeking and knocking and you have gotten an answer, then the proper response is to thank God for it, to express praise and honor to him because of what he has done, to be mindful, to remember. And one of the ways that I do this is that I keep a journal. And in my journal, I record when God answers prayers. I write down things that I'm thankful for on lists. I remember to share those things. I, I try and tell other people uh, the things that God is doing for me often. May I encourage you to do likewise? Don't just pray and ask God for things. 
but remember those things and remember to thank him for those things. Have you been seeking something for a long time that you just don't understand why it hasn't come about? Maybe there's an opportunity there for you to have a prayer time with God where you just simply ask him, God, are the desires of my heart, the things that I'm seeking right now, lined up with your will and your purpose for my life? Just because we ask something does not mean that we're asking it from the right place, does not mean that it honors God. Just because we ask for it doesn't necessarily mean that we need it. Just because we've been seeking something and desiring something and wanting it for a long time does not mean that it is the right thing for us. And these things can be very hard to discern and even more difficult to accept when we feel like the answer is no. I remember for me a long time ago, I was praying diligently for a new car and a friend um, and I went to a prayer gathering um, and I had invited her to go along with me and we were seated on the very front row of a well-known um, minister. And as we sat there and the prayer, the, the teaching was going on and the lesson was really good and, and I felt God was touching my heart and speaking to me and encouraging me and then the person um, called us up for prayer and said that they felt that someone there um, needed a car and that they felt God was saying yes. And so in my heart, I was believing that God, this is for me and you're going to give me a car. Well, we left and my friend said, I really felt like God spoke to me and that God is telling me that, um, I'm, you know, he's, he's going to bless me with a car. Well, that was true. About a couple days later, my friend was blessed with the car and I was really excited for her. But then I was like, well, God, I was asking you for a car and what's going to happen with my car? And um, later that day, I had a flat tire and my husband um, went and bought a new set of tires for my car that I had. It's an older um, van and I knew that because he had bought a new set of tires that I wouldn't be getting a new car anytime soon. It would be a year before I actually got a new car. So I was asking for something and God did eventually answer that prayer, but I had to then look at my heart and not get jealous and upset because my friend had been blessed with the car. And so sometimes things don't go the way that we want them to but it's an opportunity for us to look at our hearts and to really ask God, God, is this the will that you have for me now? Is this what you want me to do? And I, I'm asking you, I'm seeking, I'm knocking, but is this the right door? Am I at the wrong door? Am I knocking about the wrong thing? Am I asking or seeking the wrong thing? That, that, that challenged me, but through the years, it has been an encouragement to me because I've learned that not every yes is a yes immediately. Not every no is a no for always. And sometimes the wait means to keep praying and believing for God's timing and God's will and God's way. So I hope that encourages you rather than discouraging you that we need to not only believe for things, but we need to start asking God to clarify what his will is in those things. So as we think about this passage, we should remember to do this. We should pray to obtain our needs. If you have a need, then pray about it. If your family has a need, then pray about it. We can be such an example for our children to see the goodness of God by the things that we pray about and then share with them. You know, our kids need a, a good grade on, in, uh, on a um, subject that they're taking, say math. They want to get an A on the test. Well, if your kids are doing the work, everything that they need, then ask God about that and then watch what he does and watch how it builds faith with your children. We should pray often. We sh if you need something, we should ask God for it. It's okay to repeat things. As long as we're specific about them and we're seeking him, then we'll be able to see when the answer comes. Our God is all wise. 
And so that means that God knows what is best for us. He knows all the extenuating circumstances that we don't even think about. So like, for instance, with me, we couldn't financially afford a car that year. There were things that we needed to save for. But with a new set of tires on a car that was running well, even though it had gotten old, it still got me where I needed to go. I was able to take my kids to school every day, do the things that I need to do, go to minister, go to work, whatever it was. So while I wanted a new car, I didn't really need a new car. What I needed was new tires and God provided. And I'm grateful for that, for the lesson. So we we're talking about asking, seeking and knocking. So how should we ask? Well, there are some things that we should be mindful of. You know, just asking for something like we can say, you know, I want a new purse. I want a new dress. And all those things are fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you notice, I said, I want, I want. Well, when we're coming before God in prayer, do we ever ask him, God, what do you want for me? What do you want me to do? How should I pray about this? What should I be seeking now? What doors should I be knocking on? You know, many of us right now, we are in between jobs. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you're just trying to find a job. Maybe you're in school and you're getting ready to graduate and you're wondering with everything that's going on, what's going to happen. It's a good time to start praying about it. God, show me your will for my life. Show me how to pray for the job that you have for me next. God, help me to be able to seek you. I pray that I would have the right boss. I pray that it would be in the right location. I pray that the time that the job would be would be right. You know, many of us don't want to work on Sundays because we want to be able to go to church. So why not pray and ask God? Father, when you bless me with this job, Will you bless me with a job where I don't have to work on Sundays? I understand that many people do have to work on Sundays, but I'm asking you, God, if it's your will for my life, that I would find a job that I don't have to. For those who might be working on Sunday and then you, you don't want to work on Sunday, start praying about it. Father, is there any way for me to get a new shift time, a new day that I can work? Is there something that I can do? Father, show me, give me wisdom, but help me to be diligent to do what you've called me to do in the place you've called me to be for now. Just being at peace with whatever's going on in our lives. So we should ask for prayer. When we're praying, we should ask in Jesus' name. And we should pray based on his word. And we should be led by the Holy Spirit. So as we're praying, we're sensing, God, what are you saying to me? What are you showing me? What do you want me to do? For me, that day when I called my husband and he said he was going to get new tires, I knew God was speaking to me. Delphine, it's not the time for you to get a new car. Trust me. And one year later, I got a new car. And we were able to financially afford it. It was no hardship on our family. And I kept that car for a lot of years and we passed it down to our son who was then old enough to drive. And so God knows the little details as well as the big details. We see clearly sometimes, but most of the time we are seeing just a little bit, but the father sees everything and he knows what we need. So we should pray to obtain our needs. We should pray often. And we should pray to an all-wise God in his name, based on his word, being led by his Holy Spirit. And that remains true in all situations, no matter what we're praying about. If we are doing those basic things, then we can say, God, when I ask, you're going to answer. When I seek, I'm going to find when I knock, you're going to open. And we can be confident that if it's not according to his will, if it's not something we should be looking for, if it's not something that we should be trying to get open, that he will show us. So what does that mean, um, being led by his spirit and according to his word? 
It means that we should have the proper spirit, that when we come to God in prayer, we are praying with a spirit of humility, that we know that this father is a good father, that he wants to talk to us, he wants to commune with us, and he wants to answer our prayers. We should come with sincerity. God, I trust you. I believe that you're going to do this for me. I want what's best. And God, if this is not best for me, then would you show me? Would you guide me? Would you teach me how to pray? Remember, that's what the disciples asked Jesus. Teach us how to pray. And then it means that we're going to have perseverance. That means that no matter how long it takes, we're going to continue to pray and ask God about it. So may I ask you, what are some things that God is willing to do? You know, we're saying, okay, if I ask you, if I seek, if I knock, he's promised that he's going to do it. But what is he willing to do? You know, there are some things that God is not willing to do. And there are some things that he is willing to do. I'm going to just give you five things that you can always be sure that when you are praying about these things, that God is with you, that he will answer that prayer, that what you're seeking will be found, that the door that you're knocking on would be open. These are five sure things. Number one, that God wants to provide for us. You can trust him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He is our shepherd. He's a good shepherd who wants to provide for us. He wants us to have food. He wants us to be able to have a place to live. He wants those things for us. So no matter what situation or circumstance you may find yourself in, he wants those things for you. And I know this can be difficult because we go through many things and there are people who are living in the streets. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with them, but I'm saying that there is the ability for them to continue to pray that circumstances will change and believe. And we as God's people who have roofs over our heads to be mindful, to keep giving to others and doing so that the needs of others will be met as well as our needs. You know, the widow gave everything that she had. She put it in the offering and Jesus spoke well of her because she was still giving to others even in her need. And that's how we have to be. But number two, when we ask God to forgive our sins, he will forgive our sins. Remember, we're asking in humility. We're coming with sincere hearts before him. And we can trust him to answer that. Number three, for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ, we already know the answer to this. For those of us who have not, let me encourage you, God wants to save your soul. And all you have to do is ask him. Ask him to come into your life to be your Savior and Lord. And his answer is yes. And number four, God wants to be with us in our trials and difficulties. No matter what, we've, what we are going through, he wants to be with us. He wants to lead and guide us. He wants to speak to us, to give us wisdom. So no matter what you may be going through, whether it's sickness, whether it's job problems, financial difficulties, family disputes, whatever it may be, pray and ask God, seek him. Knock on that door. Father, I cannot get through this by myself. I need you to help me love my husband. I need you to help me take care of my children. I need you to help me deal with this boss on my job who always gives me more work, I think, than others. I need you to help me to be patient when I'm driving in the car and people are, are honking their horns and cutting in front of me. I need you to help me to put on my mask and, and do the things that I need to do during this pandemic, things that I don't want to do. I need you, God, to show me the direction that you have for me. 
I need you to help me to say yes, God, when I want to say no, but I feel that leading from you to do this. And number five, we can ask God to comfort us in death or comfort others in death. These are prayers that when we pray these prayers to the Father, he answers. So right now, let's just ask him, Father, in the name of Jesus, for every person under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, that you would provide our daily needs for us. That, God, you would be a God who forgives our sins. God, those things that we have done over this last week that were not pleasing in your sight, forgive us, cleanse us, heal us, guide us, Lord. Father, for those that don't know you, save souls, God. Change lives. Draw them into your kingdom. We pray for every member of our family who does not know you. Save them, God, before it is too late. For all those in our church who have just been visiting and checking it out, but who have not accepted you as Lord and Savior, would you, by your Holy Spirit, save them, God? Father, we pray that you would always be with us in trials and difficulties, that you would walk with us and talk with us and lead us and guide us. Help us to see you, God in the midst of these trials and difficulties, to know that you are with us. Father, we thank you that you are a comforter, that you comfort. Right now, Lord, there are people in hospital rooms all around this world who are at the point of death. Would you comfort them, Lord? Would you be with them? Would you guide them? God, we know that we can trust you when the hour comes for us, that you will comfort us as you comforted your son on the cross. Holy Spirit, we need you. Teach us how to ask, how to seek, and how to knock according to your will, your word, and your way, that we might be the people that you have called us to be. We thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you that you are God who answers prayer. We thank you, God, for leading us along the paths of righteousness. For your name's sake, amen. And so as we conclude this time today, I want to encourage you. Number one, ask according to his word and his way. Number two, pray always in faith. And number three, submit to the will of God. Just remember, Keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking, and he will answer. From my home to your home, wishing you blessings filled with lots of virtual hugs and love. God bless you and keep you. <laughs>